Did it like stop in the middle of it? No, it never started. It never started? Yeah. Oh, I've been talking this whole time. Yeah. Hello, hello. Oh my goodness. I have been talking this entire time <laughs> and didn't realize I hadn't pressed the button to go live. <laughs> so I'm going to restart everything. <laughs> um, okay, let me get my bearings because I have to restart where I was. Um, okay, I, I don't know why I didn't press live. Thank you, Mike. My husband just came in and was like, you're not live. I'm like, oh. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to class. I'm going to play the intro real quick just so um, I can reset up and y'all can know where we are, okay? <laughs> Be right back. everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another live class. Um, yeah, welcome in. I need to get my bearings. Um, so I just had this 12 minute intro and now I have to redo it because I never pressed live. Welcome back in. Um, say hi if you're here and I've been waiting for the last 12 minutes. Um, welcome in. This is going to be our first of many juniors classes. Now this class is geared toward, I want to say, 5 to 12, but anyone is welcome. It's a great class to... Um, for practicing and even if you're a beginner um, or an intermediate it's just a good way to uh, practice the the canvas so to speak that I have for today is going to be my sketchbook I'm going to do all my juniors classes in my sketchbook and this is so that um, it's a smaller scale it's easy um, to just whip out you can take it with you anywhere um, and anyways, I have that in my Amazon shop. So if you want to get one of these and just have it for all these classes, um, I would highly recommend it. They're really good. I also use these for watercolor. Um, so it's a multimedia book so that you can use it for multimedia. So I use it for acrylics and watercolor. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and um, get into it. I do have a traceable. I'll go ahead and post that now. I have a traceable um, for this class. It's available to all patrons and I have it available for the eight and a half by five and a half for the sketchbook size. And then I also have it available for the eight by 10 and nine by 12. I didn't have it for, I didn't make one for the 11 by 14 because I figured the people who were probably going to be doing this class are going to be on a smaller scale but if you are a patron and you want a larger size of any of my traceables please let me know and I will just whip up whatever size you need and I can just add it to that original post okay um, if you are not on my Facebook that is mainly where I'm at so I post all my updates on YouTube classes, Patreon classes. Um, I post a couple things here in the YouTube community, but most of my things are on YouTube. So make sure that you follow me on uh, Facebook. Make sure that you follow me on Facebook. I also have my artist community. Um, there's a link down 
um, below as well as on the screen. It's Facebook slash groups slash Samantha Anderson Artist. And you can join that group and share your work. I would love to see it. I love seeing everybody's work um, after we're finished with class. So make sure you do that. Um, let's go over supplies real quick. I already mentioned the sketchbook. Um, all of these, all of these supplies are available on my shop with the exception of my new brush kit. Um, I actually got sent these from Grabby and to try out and I'm really liking them so far. Um, I think I like them better than the, the one I bought on Amazon. So I will be doing a review of this video very, very soon. Um, a review video of these very, very soon and I will get that out. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'll be using. I'll go over the exact um, sizes that I will be using. Um, this is the only brush that I'm keeping from the older um, kit because I just, I really like the size. Um, and the new kit didn't have a larger filbert. So I have a large filbert. Um, you can use, I think it's a three quarters inch um, cause this would be, this would be a one inch. So I believe it's three quarters. Um, and just any medium to large filbert. Um, you can also use a, like a wash or like a, um, like a knot filbert. Um, but I like the filberts, just how they, they don't leave as much streaks, in my opinion. Um, and then I will also be using a small filbert. A filbert is just a flat brush that's um, like oval at the top. So that's what a filbert is. So I'll be using that. And you can get thick strokes as well as thin strokes, depending on um, how you hold it. And then I will be having two round brushes. So a medium size brush, round brush, and then a small round brush. So those are the two, these are the four ones that we'll be using for this class. So not a whole bunch. Um, and then if, if you're working on liner brushes and you're working on lines, feel free to use a liner brush with the trees and things like that. Um, get in your practice, however you wanna do it. And then other things you may need, if you are mixing paint, you can always change the colors of anything that we use. So if you decide to change a color um, and mix it, mix a good amount of it and I use a small, um, palette knife to mix my paint. I don't think we have any mixing in this specific painting though, so I, I might not use mine. Uh, you'll need a pencil. I have, um, obviously I do have my traceables, um, but if you did not put that on yet or you don't want to, you don't have it, uh, that is okay. I'm going to be teaching you how to draw this. It's very, very simple. Simple shapes. Uh, I will go over all of that when we start class. So you will need a pencil. The main thing I will say about using a pencil is make sure that you don't press too hard. Especially kids, um, you tend to be very heavy handed, like all kids are. Um, so try to try to do very light strokes when we're, when we're uh, drawing this on so that you can erase any marks that you don't want. And then at the end, if you wanna darken anything, that's easy to do. Okay, um, I have my palette, my water, and a paper towel. And I believe that is all of the supplies other than the colors. Now the colors, I'm using um, heavy body acrylic paint. They are in these bottles, um, but they are not craft a paint. They're not craft paint. So usually when you go to the store, you um, can get craft paint, which is very, it's soft body acrylics it's very it's more liquid um, like if you pour it out it'll it will drip this will not drip um, so that's just the difference between the heavy body and the soft body acrylics um, even though these are in the bottles they are heavy body um, which if you're using the other kind that's totally fine you just won't have to uh, add water to it when you're mixing or putting on the canvas um, okay so I have my black and white talk about colors real fast black and white. I have my blue for the sky, uh, orange for the pumpkin, and yellow for the pumpkin. And then I have my burnt umber. Technically you don't need burnt umber, uh, and burnt umber is just a very dark brown. Um, but I like to use it for the, uh, the branches and some of the uh, low lights of the pumpkin as well as the stem. So if you want to use a brighter brown, you could do that but I find that um, the darker brown looks well. 
Um, yeah, if you are here, please say hi in the comments. Um, that whole intro kind of threw me off. I was like saying hi to people and then you weren't responding and it was weird. Um, but hello. Um, Christina says, I'm excited for this one. Brian says, can't wait. And um, Mike also says, can't wait. Hello, hi. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna move my camera a little bit. And yeah, let's get going. We are going to first draw this on. So get your pencil out um, if you haven't already drawn this on. So we want the moon, we're gonna draw the moon first so that we leave enough room for it. And this is just a very, if you have like a cap or something or you can use whatever you have, you could use this like, oh, that's a good size moon and you can draw around it. Or if you want to freehand it, that's fine too. Um, when you're painting it, you could even use a sponge dauber and just use white and, sorry, my hand's in the way. You can just like do that and make your moon that way. Um, there's many ways that you can kind of do this. So I'm just gonna draw it in the corner. I'm just gonna draw a circle. I'm drawing very lightly so I can just go over it. And then if anything's too dark, I can just, you can erase the lines that you don't want. But again, this is just the sketching process. It does not have to be perfect, okay? Um, I'm not gonna put in the tree because I can do that later. Um, I am gonna put in the ghost. So I want him to be about in the middle and uh, his head to go about there. And then I'm just gonna gently, I'm gonna hold it really far away. So one, so that you can see what I'm doing. But also, um, I like to do this when I'm lightly sketching it in because it makes, if I'm holding it really close, oops, and in the water it goes. Um, if I'm holding it really, really close, I, I can be heavy handed and not realize that I'm being heavy handed, which means I'm pushing really hard. If I'm really far away, it's a lot harder to push hard. It's more difficult to push hard. So I'm just gonna go back and forth and go down to about here, about one third of the way, and he's gonna have a little shoulder here. And he's gonna come around here. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Get a little shoulder. And I'm gonna draw the big pumpkin. Now this. And you can see like this pumpkin is really odd shaped, but I can come back in and darken the places that I want to keep. That's why it's really important to when you're sketching, it really is a sketch. You just gotta very lightly put that in. And then we're gonna come around here and I'm gonna have, last time I didn't touch his hands. I'm gonna touch his hands this time so there's not like that awkward um, like black spot underneath. And I'm gonna make this a little. All right, so I feel like his shoulders are a little bit too tall. So I'm gonna bring his like head down a little bit and then go out. So this is where you get to, get to kind of adjust things I'm just gonna erase that part. And you can make his head bigger if you need to. You can make his head smaller. And I'm just going to give him like a body. And I think I want his shoulder to come down further and his arm to come out more. You see how I'm just like adjusting little bits at a time? Maybe my pumpkin needs to be bigger. I'm gonna make my pumpkin bigger. I'm just kind of adding a few centimeters or a centimeter to like the top. I like where the bottom is, so I'm just 
adding it to the top and I'm just erasing that top the old the old sketch of my pumpkin there I think that looks great um, now I'm going to put in these pumpkin lines and I'm following the curvature of I'm following the curvature of the pumpkin so it, for me right now it's kind of hard to get that curvature when, it, when it's on the um, when it's on the easel so I'm just going to take it off so I can use the natural curvature of my hand you see how that happens the natural curve of my hand I'm using that to my advantage now I'm going to turn it the other side instead of trying to go like around like this I'm just going to use my hand and it's going to get less and less curvy the closer you get in because it start, it's starting to come around from front so it'll look straighter as it comes around. So now that we have those lines um, and we're going to go over these lines but it's just it'll help us as we're going. Um, to know where these lines are because uh, now we get to draw this little pumpkin um, stem and it can go either direction it doesn't have to go um, to the right it's just how I initially drew it and then it's gonna go there's gonna be a little bit of a star at the the top of the head all right, now we get to put in our little face. Um, and I like to think of these like teardrops with like a little like thing on the end. So it's like big, big on the bottom, small at the top. And honestly, this, this can look however you want. It doesn't have to be the face doesn't have to look like mine. You can make whatever face you want. And then on the end, on the bottom out outer edge, I kind of kind of protrudes a little bit. It makes him look like happier, I feel like, like more friendly because if it's like this, then he's going to look angry. And then you just got a little wobbly little wobbly um, mouth I'm only erasing my extra line so you, it becomes more clear for you guys all right so that's about what it looks like There we go, you got your little little happy pumpkin. Or happy ghost. So now we're gonna do a little happy pumpkin. So um, I'm gonna do my eyes on both. If you have one going down the middle, one line going down the middle, you can put two um, upside down U's on each of the ones that's next to that. And then just do one bigger above that. So then you have two cute little eyes. And then this guy, you can do a little nose if you want to. I chose not to. Do a big smile. And I'm doing the whole bottom first. You're going to have a bigger mouth or a smaller mouth. And then you can give him a little, little tooth if you want. That's what I did. And then I'm just erasing 
you are going to want to race the lines inside of the mouth because that's where the yellow is going and the yellow you'll have to put on like five layers of yellow in order to cover up um, your your lines so make sure that the insides of the eyes and the insides of the mouth are cleaned up alright I'm just going to erase a little bit of my eye so that it's not so dark so that my lines aren't so dark all right and there we have it there's our little our little drawing you have successfully drawn a friendly ghost and pumpkin okay let's get our paints out this is what we are here to do I'm gonna get out my phthalo blue and my white Phthalo blue and white. Um, now the first thing, we're going to use our um, bigger brush for this. I want to um, accentuate that it's okay if you go inside the lines of the... There's like a... My son's like hitting my face. It's distracting. Um, it's okay if you go inside the lines of the... Um, the ghost just try I would say try to not go inside but if you go inside of it that's okay we can always come back around all of the edges um, and clean it up okay so I'm going to dip my water or dip my brush in water and kind of um, wipe it off a little bit I'm going to grab just pure white and I'm going to go around the whole moon over the moon the whole moon Now I'm going to take a little bit of blue and go around the outside of that. And then you can circle in. Don't worry too much about the shape of the moon. Because we will be shaping it later. I'm going to grab a little bit more of my dark blue. And I'm slowly going to start moving out with that dark color. I'm going to grab a little bit more white. Because I don't want it to get too dark too quickly. I'm going to go around my, my little guy right here. And while this is still wet, if you're on paper, you will need to move a little bit fast. Just because it dries a little bit faster than canvas. I'm going to go back over here. A little bit of my white and blue and I'm not rinsing out my brush because I want these two colors to mix Add a little bit of a dark blue in the corner and slowly I'm gonna start getting that darker color in And soon, like right now, I'm only using my phthalo blue, my dark, dark blue. And I'm going to take that all the way down. And all the way down, I'm mimicking the direction that's around the moon. So after I get my paint on there, After I get my paint on there, I'm going to go side to side so that if if I see paint strokes, it's going to match like the rays of the moon and the direction that I went for that. All right, so now that this is dry, I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to put it not not quite on this section because I know that this has a little bit more of a um, light, lighter color. And as I move my way up, I'm going to grab back into that white. 
so I can start lightening it up so that they can blend. And this is the point that you get to practice your blending, but in the end, we are gonna be adding some, um, some clouds if you want, so that if you do, you know, quote unquote mess up and you don't like your sky, um, you can just add a little bit of clouds and kind of cover up the parts of the sky that you don't like. Tips and tricks. Okay, I'm going to take this all the way down. So we have your your background and you can go lighter if you want you can go darker um, I think the first time I did it I chose to go a little bit lighter and this time I chose to go a little darker so you can change it um, and now while that dries I'm gonna go back in to my moon I'm going to grab the smallest filbert I have not the smallest but this with the smaller of the two that we're using today and I'm going to go back over my moon and again if you have like a like one of these sponge dauber you can get the white on that and do that if you wanted to to make it easy or you can put it in yourself go and you might have to do two coats to get it really covered uh, so we're gonna add some clouds now with the same <clears throat> white I'm just gonna grab some more white and I'm going to you can so that this is a really fun thing that you can do um, for the top of your clouds you can just make them fluffy and you can just kind of put them in like that You can also bring in clouds kind of in the round. And if it mix into some of your blue, like that's okay too. You can always come back over it with, um, with more white if you needed to. Like if I were to come back over with white, um, I would put it just on the tips because that's where the that's where the light is going to be hitting it. So 
and then I put it just on the top. There, you got your you got your clouds. Remember that we are just we are just practicing. We're just painting. Things don't have to be perfect. Um, while the background is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and put in um, a little layer of white to crisp up the edges of my ghost because I did go in a little bit, and that is totally normal, totally fine. And this is where you really get to um, create the shape of his head. If you want it to be a little bit more round, if you want it to be a little bit more combed at the top um, and comes out at the bottom a little bit more. And I'm just using my filbert to just create that line going around. I'm going to turn this to the side so it's easier for me to paint. And then as I'm going around, let's say I have a good amount of white on my brush and I'm making that crisp line that you see, I'm now going to have a little bump of white right here. Do you see it? This little bump of white, I'm just gonna brush that down and brush that in so that I don't have this weird like line. Um, later when I'm, when I'm doing that. So I'm going to create this part. And I had a little bit of blue on my brush, so that's fine. I'm just going to kind of brush that out. There is a little bit of blue in the darkness of the, um, that's the shadow color of the ghost, so it's okay if there's a little bit of blue in there. Uh, okay, so that's just for the edges. Now we're gonna do the rest of the background so we can move to the foreground, the focus. Let's go ahead and grab our raw umber. You can also use burnt umber. That's also a pretty dark brown. And you can do this a couple different ways. You can use it, you can use all of uh, your medium sized round brush. You can use a filbert and then a liner brush. Um, it's really however you want to do it. I'm going to go ahead and use my filbert brush because I like to get all the thick lines out of the way with that one. And then I can go in with a smaller brush or a liner brush. So I'm going to get it wet, grab a little bit of my brown, and I'm going to figure out where the thickest stems are. And I'm just going to, I'm going to start thin, so it's not going to be that thin. But if you turn it sideways so that it's um, that it's vertical, your brush is vertical versus going this direction, it's going this direction, going up and down. If you start at the top and start very, very thinly, then you can go thicker, you just place, like push harder on your brush and it will, um, it'll get thicker. The nice thing about like you know, I would say like spooky trees like this 
is that, um, or just like trees like this in general, trees in general, honestly, um, is that they're very, they're not like super straight. Like it's got little like, you know, nubs on it and um, they go different directions. So I'm gonna go all the way over here. I'm gonna make that one thicker. So I have, I think that's the biggest ones that I'm going to make. Um, I probably could do the rest of them with this brush, but it's just gonna be easier using a smaller brush. So I'm gonna get that one wet, um, wipe it off so it's not super wet, damp. I'm gonna grab some of my brown. And whenever you're using a round brush, after you load it, you're gonna roll it and lift it off of the palette so that it's all evenly coated and you don't have any clumps. So now you're just going to, um, I usually have something to set. I used, uh, I did this in face painting. Um, I would have my pinky to have a stability. Um, the same thing here. I'm, I'm on an easel so I don't have like a desk really to put my hand on while I do this. So I'm using my left hand as an anchor point so that when I'm doing this, I'm not, ooh, I don't know where I'm going. I have something to rest my arm on so that I'm more stable. Um, so I'm just going to do that. And you can add as many as many little limbs as you want. If you're working on a liner brush, you can grab your liner and you can do that as well. Whenever you're doing trees, you have to think less about how perfect each one is and more about quantity um, because when it comes down to it you're not gonna notice the individual pieces you're gonna notice just how much there is And I would say for trees, make sure that your branches cross and that they're not all just perfectly lined up to not touch each other. Because when you're looking at a tree that's kind of up in the sky and everything's gonna cross itself.
There we go. That's fun. It's good practice. It's really good practice to do trees like this because then you get practice getting in all those little details and being able to make sure you have the correct amount of paint on your brush and know the consistency of you know water to paint ratio which is usually like half and half. Um, so if it's not going on very well try to get add a little bit more water onto that um, onto your brush when you get more paint and that will help the consistency to flow a little bit better. Um, all right so we got that so now we can do our um, let's go ahead and do our ghost um, I'm gonna do one more thing we're gonna do the inside of this and it doesn't have to match the background I wasn't really supposed to um, so I'm actually going to mix mine um, and make it a little bit darker I'm going to use a smaller brush for it because this one's too big. And what's nice about doing this before you do the white is now I can come behind and fix anything if I don't like it. I'm just using pure phthalo blue. And that's how that's how dark it, it is. Again, if it's not going on very easy, just grab a tiny bit of water. All right. We do need to let that dry before we um, before we move on to the white, so I'm going to go ahead and do the inside of the pumpkin, so the yellow part. I'm just going to take my filbert or whatever brush you want to use for this. Just make sure it's clean. I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it over the eyes and the mouth and you'll see real quickly that you can still see all the all the markings on it which is why we wanted to make sure that the inside of it was clean So I'm just going over it, making sure that I kind of go outside of the lines so that when we create, uh, when we do the pumpkin, um, we can create those lines. All right, so I think that's probably good. I'm going to grab some white, still with my small filbert. I'm going to go over the edges just one more time because my blue was very, very dark. Just on the parts that were super dark.
and then once more on the moon if you haven't done that already. And then I'm actually gonna take a different brush with some of this blue and while it's still wet. Kind of create some crater-esque um, shapes in it. And I'm gonna dry off my brush and I'm just going to kind of blend that in just a little bit. I didn't do that on the first time around because either I didn't think about it or I forgot about it. But um, yeah, got a little, a little moon right there. And now we're gonna take just pure white um, and go over the face. And you can crisp up any lines there that you need to. I'm using my filbert because I'm very comfortable with my filbert, but if you're not comfortable with it, either use this time as a practice or you can go to a another brush that you're more comfortable with. Totally up to you. I'm just going to go around. And you're just going to keep working your way down with your white. I know you can't see much of it now, um, but what we'll you need to cover, you need to cover it with white paint. And I'm going to go over this section real fast. And as we go down, I'm going to grab a little bit of my yellow, and this is going to be almost like a, like just a glow of the light and it it'll be easier to put this on when the white is wet so you get a little bit of white uh, yellow and you just blend it in to the white up there that'll kind of just add that glow to it and then we're going to take white all the way around. And as we come around, there's going to be yellow on this side and blue on the other side. So I'm just going to get a little bit of blue and add that to my brush. And I'm going to, with, with using the white and the blue, you can just blend that in. And 
And if you get too much blue, you can just rinse out your brush, wipe it off, grab some white, and put it down where you need your white. And while this is still wet, I'm just going to take a little bit of white, or sorry, a little bit of yellow, and add it just to the top of that. I'm trying to keep the blue and the yellow separate a little bit so that it doesn't turn into a green. If you feel like you're going to have a troubles doing that, wait until the blue and the white uh, dry and then you can add a, a yellow on top of it. So now I'm going to go down here and do that to the other side. I'm going to add white. And I'm going to grab a little bit of blue and mix it in with the white that's on my brush. I'm just going to put it on the outer edge of the arm and the hand. Like that. You can always come back in with your white if you feel like it needs to be brighter. go in with a tiny bit of yellow and just lighten up that top part. Now we're going to do the bottom here, and the bottom's going to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to grab some of my blue and mix it in with some of my white and just create a little bit of a darker shade. I'm going to focus on getting going around. Going around that. The arms. come back with my white I'm trying to use my brush in such a way that, if, um, like how the the fabric of the ghost, like if it was a, I don't know, let's say it was a kid underneath a sheet. I'm trying to have my strokes go down. As to suggest that like that's that's where it is. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white and add 
some lightness to the edge here. And then a little bit on this side. Almost like the, the light of the moon is coming around. And this is just the darkest part of that. So I'm just adding some finishing touches on the ghost. Added a slightly, slightly blue hint to the face, and now I'm just kind of lightening it up a little bit with white. I feel like it would be backlit a little bit, so. But it's also got the pumpkin in there, um, which creates a light source, so. Right. now is the time to correct anything um, in the face or correct anything um, on the ghost um, himself because we're going to put in our pumpkin all right I'm going to grab my orange We're going to do a little bit more of a wash. So I have a little bit of water and my orange. So I don't want it to be super, super thick because I don't want to lose my lines. But I do want to create sharp lines on the, on the edge. So I'm being really careful around the smile and the eyes. Just kind of, I'm just kind of coloring it all in essentially.
I'm just taking my time. And if you want it to be more sketchy, um, you can go a little faster, you can go a little quicker. And, you know, if you're just trying to get in some practice, but sometimes going slow and really making sure, you know, you have a good handle on the brush um, is really a good practice. So there we have it. There's our little little pumpkin. I'm gonna go ahead and do his little tooth real fast. He's so cute. Um, and then we're gonna do while that dries. We're gonna go into the brown and do his little stem. I just made sure to kind of go in the little areas uh, everywhere there where there's like a line you want to go in Now, I'm going to grab my medium sized brush. I'm going to grab some yellow, like the tiniest bit of orange, and some white. I'm going to mix that together. So I have mostly yellow, a tad bit of orange, and a little bit of white. I'm going to use that for like the inside of like his mouth and the inside of his eyes. Like there's like an inside like layer. I don't know how to describe it. It's the inside of the pumpkin layer. So not in him, but like it's like that the the layer of actual pumpkin. to describe it. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? I'm just going to do a little a little bit of that. And if you need to do two coats, like if, if something is showing through and you need to do two coats and that's totally fine. You can also make it um, maybe slightly, maybe I'll make mine slightly darker. So at this point, like I could look at it and be like, okay, I think it needs to be slightly darker. So maybe I put too much white in it so I can make it a little darker and go over it all again so you can see it better. And that second layer will also make it more opaque. So go under the eyes 
and on the bottom side of his mouth. Top of his tooth. Uh, now for our very last step, we get to create the highlights and lowlights of the pumpkin. So we're going to do another layer of orange, except this time, wherever there's a line, we're going to do a little bit of a darker, um, we're going to kind of sink in where that line is. Um, and then we're also going to pay attention to where the light source is. So the light source is coming from here onto the pumpkin, so it's going to be a little bit lighter on this side and a little bit darker on the right bottom side. So I'm going to grab some water and some of this orange. I'm going to grab some, maybe some of this lighter yellow color that we just mixed up. I'm going to put that on this side and a little bit of the top here. And then I'm going to go into my brown and mix together some of this orange. And I'm going to start creating that line. And you can come back with your orange. If you have too much dark on it, you can rinse out your brush. Come back with your orange. So work in small amounts, um, or you can do kind of like what I did, and where I'm going to put on like layers upon layers. I'm going to go a little bit lighter over here. Like lighter on all the tops. Get some of that white. I'm only putting I'm only putting the highlight in like the middle of the bump and not like the entire top of it. I get a little bit of a darker brown with my orange. And I'm going to start darkening the bottom of this. And if you ever do that, where you go outside of your lines, you're like, oh no, grab a clean brush, grab some water, and try to clean it away. On paper, it's a little bit harder to do that. You can also just let it dry and then come back with some more layers. And fix it a little bit later. Okay, 
I'm going a little bit darker now on this side. into my orange and you're just going to slowly start creating the highlights and lowlights. I'm going to make a highlight with my orange and my yellow and my white. I'm going to put it on Top here, and I think I need a little bit more weight. White, not weight. And then I need to get a little bit darker underneath here. So I'm just going to go straight into my raw umber. And I'm just going to do a line and then brush up. And you start to get that dark shadowy feeling I'm do it again right here so you can see go around just the very tip of my brush around the base and then I'm going to brush it up I'm trying to pay specifically attention to where those lines are We are pretty close. I'm going to do a little bit of highlight at just the very top of white. And then I'm going to fix the inside because I went in a little bit with my um, with my orange, so I'm just going to grab some white and yellow. And so at this point, then I'm going to fix anything um, on the hand. So I'm just going to take my white.
any highlights to the tree? I am not, but you could. Um, I think you could add highlights. Here, we can do that. I will grab some dark brown and a tiny bit of white just to lighten it up ever so slightly. And you could add it to everything that's like on the left side. So you could add it to right here. I might add a little bit more white to my brown. It's kind of hard to see on the camera, but I did add some highlight. All right, and then the last highlight that I'm going to add is a little tiny highlight on the left side of the uh, the stem, and that's the last thing. Yeah, I think that's it. The last uh, thing to do, I keep saying the last thing, the actual last thing, is to sign it and take the tape off. So I like signing my work with um, this paint pen marker, paint marker pen, what is it? Paint marker pen. Um, it's just, it's easy for me. And I'm going to just sign it right here. That and we'll take off the uh, we'll take off the tape. I will say, unless you have like, um, I just use paint, um, like painter's tape. But if you have, I think, what is it called? Um, it's a special type of tape for this sort of thing. Um, you just have to be careful with painter's tape because sometimes it'll take up, it'll take off like layers of the paper. Canvas, you don't have to worry about that, but I usually go pretty slow when I'm taking it off of this. It's so satisfying. And there you go. There you have it, our cute little cute little uh, friendly ghost and pumpkin. All right, thank you for uh, joining me. I look forward to our next class. Our next class is going to be a beginner intermediate class. Uh, that's gonna be like the more realistic, more realism type of uh, class that I like to do. Um, so I have a juniors class, a beginner intermediate, and then I have a like a beginner newcomer Kind of paint night style class and then another beginner intermediate so i hope you guys will join it for that uh, please join my community and um, share your work and yeah in patreon we just finished i don't know i i don't know if i shared it because we i i know i shared it once but i don't remember if i shared it twice because um i had to like restart the beginning but we just painted this in our patreon so if you want once a month uh, tutorials specifically for my patreon i have two a month um, one is for the lower tier and it's just a pre-recorded 
um, class and then I also have a weekly class that goes on Tuesdays now. Uh, so if you want to join the line for that, I would love the support. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next class and yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye guys.